This is the Collector Car Podcast, the home for the auto enthusiast. Join Greg Stanley as he applies over 25 years of insights and analytical experience to the collector car market. He will interview the experts and throw in some fun stuff as well. Hey, it's Greg Stanley. If you're listening to this podcast, you know I love everything automotive. This passion has expanded to include being a car specialist consultant for RM Sotheby's. So if you need assistance buying or consigning a collector car at any one of our online or live auctions, including Scottsdale, Amelia Island, or Monterey, you can reach one of our car specialists at rmsotheby's.com or you can email me directly at gstanley at rmsotheby's.com. Metron Garage is a company designing unique garages, condos, and other structures specifically for the auto enthusiasts. They've got eight models to choose from, including two-story options, which I think is super cool, while with a very modern look and feel to them. And they come in all sizes, and they're fully customizable. You can check out them today and start specking your own ultimate garage at metrongarage.com, where you can request a catalog or talk to someone to learn more. So be sure to check it out. I just want to give a quick thanks to Euro Classics for sponsoring this episode. Euro Classics is all about collector cars, from servicing your new BMW M5 to prepping your Porsche for the racetrack to executing a total restoration on your favorite classic. They do it all from routine maintenance to performance upgrades to appraisals and everything in between. You can learn more about its owner, Dale Oaks, by listening to episode number 65 of this podcast. And you can find Euro Classics in the Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana service area and online at euroclassics.com classics c-l-a-s-s-i-x dot com well hey it's greg stanley this is the mega monterey episode and we have a lot to cover today but i wanted to start off big by having gord duff on to cover some of the mega cars we have coming to the auction so gord how you doing today uh doing great awesome man well i appreciate you being here you've been around you've seen a lot of stuff and it just seems like this auction gets to be bigger and bigger and more impressive every day could you kind of give us some of the highlights? We had the highlights for Friday and Saturday, but then we got a mega collection for Thursday. So I don't know quite where to begin. So I thought I'd just leave it to you. Yeah. Um, you know, we're awfully excited to be offering the the Paul Andrews uh, estate sale uh, on a special Thursday evening. I was really good friends with Paul. His family was part of doing a lot of uh, rallies and tours and you know, we got to know them pretty good on a personal level, as well as, you know, selling cars for them and, and to them and, you know, really looking forward to doing uh, an excellent job for the family. But uh, just some phenomenal cars, some of the best, you know, Aston Martins from the 61 DB4 GT Zagato to the 59 DB4 GT Lightweight that's, you know, one of nine. And I've seen that car for the last 10 years on multiple rallies driven at very high speeds. Uh, it's always been an excellent car. It's always finished every single tour it's been on all the way to his uh, Duesenberg. You know, we have a 1929 Model J. It's a, a Butterfly V windshield and they only built three of them. We sold this car to Paul back in 07 when he was first coming in and starting to buy cars and they did a full restoration on the car with Steve Babinski. And since then, I believe it to be one of the most driven Duesenberg's post restoration that I can think of. It's just a, you know, turnkey on the button. You buy it in Monterey, you could drive it back to New York. That's how, you know, confident and reliable I know this car is. So pretty much every car in his collection is turnkey on the button. You know, they have a, a couple great uh, mechanics and curators that look after the collection, but just, you know, very high quality, no excuses kind of cars. So, and most of it being offered without reserve. So it's, it's definitely going to be a big draw for us, um, kind of kicking off our weekend. Yeah. And you're kicking it off in a huge way because that, like that Aston Martin DB4 GT, correct? That one is any other Monterey year, that would be the highlight of the whole weekend, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for us to have that significant a car as part of a, a special collection on a special day is just, you know, kind of the cherry on top of the, you know, cake with the fluffy icing we already have from, you know, everything we have on, on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, speaking of which, I know we need to talk about the headlining car. So tell us about the Porsche 917. That's just such a special car to have at any auction. To have it at Monterey, it's got to be super special. Yeah, the the client felt that, you know, he needed a, a world market to 
present this car in to to really give the story properly and and obviously monterey being the the mecca of car weekends and and uh, car auctions that you know everybody in the world is paying attention to the product that comes out to monterey every year and and uh um, you know, we had a mutual friend and that's how the, the conversation started with, you know, this really special car and, and, you know, thankfully he entrusted it to us to do the best job possible for him. And currently it's sitting at the Sotheby's building in New York city on display for a, a couple of weeks. So we've had a couple of different viewings for it, and then it'll be shipped out to LA for a, a, a private event we're going to have there in our office in Culver city. And then it'll make its way up to Monterey here in, you know, less than uh, four weeks. Yeah, that's awesome. That's such an iconic and incredible car. Obviously, Gulf oil colors, Le Mans history. I mean, even the Stephen McQueen aspect to it. So it's kind of hitting all of everything, right? I mean, it's just uh, quite an iconic car that you don't see come to auction ever or very, very rarely, correct? Very rarely. And it is one of the most, if not the most iconic Porsche racing car. It's it's even for non-car people, they know what this car is. So it's, it's you know, going to be a very special weekend for us. And, you know, the consigner is, is a great guy. He's gone to finish every last possible detail, had it restored by one of the best companies in the business in the UK. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just perfect. Right. It is really cool. And I do have Alexander on to talk about some of the Porsches, uh, but it is pretty cool because once you get a Porsche like that, you know, I would tell my client or anyone, if you have a significant Porsche and you're even thinking about selling it, now's the time to do it, right? Because you've got the 917 there. So you'll have all of the world's eyes watching this auction. We'll, we'll definitely have the audience. We'll, we'll definitely have all the Porsche connoisseurs around the world, obviously paying attention to this car. And that'll in turn have them looking at other significant Porsches that we have in the sale. And and you know should add extra interest and extra bidding to other cars within the sale uh porsche specific right and what are some of the other cars that you're particularly excited about i mean i know a little bit about your taste in cars but what are some of the cars that are kind of piquing your interest that are showing up in monterey a little bit of everything but the the 59 ferrari the 410 super america it's just concord quality restored Cavalino Platinum, RM Auto Restoration restored the car back to its factory colors, but it was a car that has never been abused, never really been apart. When we pulled the car apart, it still had the original paint under the moldings. That car had only been painted once, I believe, in its entire life. So it's it's a really special car and now back to exactly the way that it, you know, left the factory. So it's it's just one of those cars I've always really, really liked from the first time that I saw it. We have a Series 2 cab Ferrari, 1961, I believe. And it's interesting in the fact that it's a, a very original car. It's had a, a few paint touch-ups maybe, but you can see the original paint, the cracking around the headlights and around the front grille. But it's a one gentleman owned it for, I want to say it was over 40 years, but it's just a, a time capsule of an original down to the, the tool roll and the books that come with it and the car certified. And for somebody that's into great original cars, that's probably one of the best Series 2 cabs that I've ever seen for originality. And it was a, a California car for most of its life. So not one of the most valuable cars in the sale, but for originality it's it's probably one of the best ones that we have we have a great gall wing that's also actually coming out of the andrews estate but it's a a three owner from new one owner from 1964 until i think around 2011 that was actually a mercedes uh, mechanic he had a shop in southern california but it's just a it's been painted once it's been trimmed once but just a good honest you know, all the numbers are correct on the car. It's never been in an accident. It's never been abused. And, you know, there's handwritten notes for the 50 some years that the second owner had it, of every little thing that he did to the car. So that's rare to see, you know, in any type of car. So I think that one will actually have lots of eyes on it as well. We have some great late model cars, some great supercars from the EB110 SS to the XJR 15 that has basically delivery mileage to, you know, a collection of uh, 
modern day manual shift uh, Ferraris like the the 599 and the 575 Super America, you know, rare, limited production, low mileage uh, spec cars. So there's kind of something for every uh, every taste out there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. All right. So as head of auctions, tell us what your Monterey week looks like, because it's got to be insane. Yeah. From from arrival, you know, we have a, a very big team, a lot of colleagues of mine that have been with us for a long, long time that are, you know, going on a, a, a decade plus of coming out to Monterey. So everybody knows what their duties are when they arrive. But all the cars will get set up over the weekend before and leading up to like by Tuesday evening, we get everything set up. And, you know, we have uh, three different rooms that we set cars up in and, and we have the the display outside in the, the back of the hotel. So it's kind of just making sure everything arrived and everything, you know, looks the way it should. And, you know, we have all the proper marketing and, and, and different materials around all the cars. And, and then, you know, Wednesday we open for preview and it's a lot of, uh, you know, making sure that any clients that show up are, are getting, uh, answers to their questions that they're asking and, and, uh, uh, following up on all the inquiries that we get and all the different clients that essentially we've already started it, but really from now when the catalog goes to print for the next three to four weeks, it's, uh, you know, our entire team is focused on reaching out to clients with past interest in similar cars or clients that we feel need to add a specific car to their collection. So it's, it's very busy that, you know, I'm doing that myself, let alone all of my other, uh, colleague uh, car specialists and then you know following up with all of them to make sure that you know we did get back to all the people that we need to for certain cars and thinking of different ideas on other ones um, so it's a it's a big team effort to make this as uh, successful as possible but it's definitely uh, the outreach that we do more so than you know just waiting for people to reach out to us on a particular car of interest Right. And I think that's something that was eye opening to me is that, you know, once the car is consigned, that's when all the work begins. You know, you're trying to make sure that not only everybody knows about it, but the right folks that might be interested in that car know about it as well. Right. Yeah. You know, as a car specialist, you have that 15 minutes of fame and glory that you're very excited when you get, you know, a specific car that you really wanted to consign to the auction and you know, after that, then it's, who am I going to sell this car to? You know, <laughs> right. What colleague of mine can help me that, you know, may know more buyers for this type of car than myself. But that's when it turns into a team effort that, you know, I'm going to help colleagues of mine that, you know, consigned a Packard and, you know, other colleagues of mine are, are going to help sell, you know, different Ferraris that, that I might have. So everybody kind of has their era and their certain clientele that are specific to certain things. And we just all work together to get as much interest and as much activity on each car as we can. But uh, um, it's a, it's a big team effort. Yeah. And I know there'll be a lot of iPhone cameras going when not only the Aston Martin sells, but obviously when the Porsche 917 sells, uh, there'll be interesting to see, you know, if that hits a record price and that goes to the global audience, like you said, because, you know, we have the car specialists and, Europe, you know, that are working just as hard on that 917 as the guys are in California and Ohio and wherever else, right? Yeah. You know, we have guys working for us around the world and they're all, you know, working on cars that they know they have clients that, that you know, should have an interest or should be participating in that particular car. And, and uh, you know, I like to be very uh, conservative going into the auctions and, and uh, you know, I Obviously, we all like when cars take off and kind of run through their estimate and maybe exceed them. But I think we all go in being conservative and obviously wanting to get the car sold. And, and uh, if, it, if it really does well, that's uh, definitely a bonus for, for everyone. Now, as I said before, this is the mega Monterey issue. So uh, everybody stick around. We got some other guests coming up here. But is there anything else you wanted to mention about the Monterey sale? Just kind of excited for it to get here already. And it's it's <laughs> if it's not our best auction we've ever put together it's it's one of the top two so it'll be uh, a very exciting weekend for you know myself and and uh, all of my colleagues and you know hoping to see some world records take place over the weekend with us and uh, I think we're gonna have a really strong sale but you know it's gonna take a lot of uh, work from all of us but you know we're we're good at doing that and good at focusing so you know uh, uh, looking forward to it awesome Gord thank you for your time today
Okay. All right. No problem, Greg. When you think of Monterey Car Week, you think of incredible cars, insane auction results, and, of course, Haggerty. So I'd like to welcome our next guest, Julie Guscalin, who is the VP of Media at Haggerty, to review some of their events that are occurring during Car Week. So, Julie, thanks for joining me today. Hi, Greg. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I really appreciate it. What's really funny is this is the third time you've been on the podcast. Uh, we've had you for the Collector Car Fantasy Football, which you are absolutely crushing us. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to, to sugarcoat that. You are killing us. Uh, and our next one will be sometime around Labor Day weekend or the week after that. So uh, I do know that when you join us, you were a director of media at Haggerty. And now I know this at your VP of media. So I wanted to see before we get into kind of what Haggerty is doing the week of Monterey Car Week, could you just kind of give an overview of your role and Haggerty Media? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my function in the organization is kind of to basically make sure that we are driving as many eyeballs to our content as possible across all of our platforms. And we are actively making a bigger and bigger investment in media in general. Um, you know, it is absolute part of our core values in how we continue to support drive and culture and then also save driving ultimately. Uh, we want to make sure that we are bringing the collector car hobby and the love of cars in general to as great of an audience as possible and that we're also helping to kind of teach the next generation of enthusiasts about um, all of the wonderful aspects of older cars. Yeah, that's really awesome. And one thing I like to do is to try to engage that next generation of car collector, which is why I do a podcast because podcast Podcast is where the kids are and even YouTube. So I, I really love the fact mm -hmm. that Haggerty is getting so involved and they've always been tremendously involved, but it sounds like Monterey Car Week is going to be kind of the launching off point for this uh, new endeavor. Is that right? It is. It is kind of a, a homecoming and a coming out party of, of sorts, right? We've all been in various stages of lockdown this year. And even though we've maybe been able to individually drive our cars and experience that, we haven't been able to do it collectively. So we're really, I think, all hobbyists in general are really excited to to be um, at Pebble this year, as well as just the all of the um, halo of car events that are happening during that week. And we certainly are uh, focused on trying to make sure that we are enabling audiences across the board, both um, on site at Pebble Beach, but also, uh, you know, from the comfort of your living room and bringing all of the great car events that happen during that week uh, to, to everybody who is interested. Um, and part of that is also a debut of Haggerty Media in general. You know, we've talked about Haggerty a lot. Obviously, people know that name, but um, we want to really also promote our Haggerty Media arm um, and really just uh, generate awareness for the breadth of what we do. In addition to our Haggerty Drivers Club magazine, which goes out to all of our um, Haggerty Drivers Club members, we also have a huge roster of YouTube video offerings that we do. We also um, have almost 5 million social media followers across the board. So we are actively trying to engage enthusiasts uh, kind of where they are, where you are most comfortable, where you get your news, where you get your car fix. That's where we want to be. Right. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. And I'm an active participant in all those different channels as mm -hmm. part of the Haggerty Drivers Club. I love the magazine. That's one of my favorite things that I do get. And one of the biggest challenges I have is time to read all the articles because what I'll do is I'll just save them in my email because I'm like, I got to read that. I got to read that. Oh, I got to read that. I got to read that. And so it's really some incredible, great content, especially when you're digging into market trends or generational shifts or that mm -hmm. special car that you loved in the past. And now you find an article about it. So a lot of really great awesome content that you are doing. Now, one thing about Monterey Car Week is sometimes it's a little hard to put my brain around everything that's happening. So I appreciate you being on to talk about specifically kind of some of the stuff that Haggerty has and where people can engage Haggerty at Monterey Car Week. Absolutely. So during Monterey Car Week, we kick off the week on August 10th with our classic motorsports Monterey event. And um, that will allow you to actually uh, meet Patrick Long and join in on some hot laps at Laguna Seca. Wow. So that's one opportunity. And uh, you can find more information on our website about that. So that kind of kicks off the week for us. Um, going further into it, we also have McCall's Motorworks Revival, which is Wednesday evening on the 11th, and uh, we are presenting sponsor of the event, and that's always a fun one because not only do you get to see some really unique and interesting um, collector cars, but they are also paired very nicely with some uh, 
lovely private plane. Oh, we got to love that combination, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's always a fun time from, uh, you know, kind of, we like to say it's all things luxury from food to cars to jets. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's a great event. Okay, what's after that? So after that, on the 14th, we've got Concourse de Lemons. And so I know that that's a personal favorite of yours and mine. You know, it's it's a lovely, um, I would say, it's not antithesis. It's, it's really just a lovely pairing to uh, what is, you know, kind of the Oscars of the car world, right? We have Pebble Beach Concord de Elegance on Sunday, which is, uh, you know, the best of the best. But then with lemons, we also have the worst of the worst. But it's all in good fun. <laughs> right. So, you know, you will see you will see our favorite classes uh, like uh, Swedish Meatballs is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, we also have useless Japanese appliances uh, and everything in between. So it's a really fun time. You don't have to know anything about cars to be able to go to that event and just enjoy yourself and, uh, you know, meet people who, who love their beaters and their hoopties and everything in between. So can you give us an example of either one of those two classes? <laughs> Sweetest meatballs <laughs> or Japanese useless appliance? Is that what it was? <laughs> yes. So I think for Swedish meatballs, our uh, mutual friend Brad Phillips has oh, yeah. previously entered his Saab 900, I believe, to that class. Okay. Uh, and, and he might be bringing that again, so that's a good example of that. And, uh, you know, then we've had kind of just fully wrecked Miatas that have come come through <laughs> and little micro cars from Japan. Um, and, you know, a wrecked belt Americana is always a good one where, you know, you have the, the original unrestored condition cars. Uh, you know, fully baked with holes and everything. <laughs> right, right, okay. <laughs> Unrepeatable, hard to, uh, you know, hard to fake. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's a fun one because, uh, you know, there is all forms of judge uh, of judging and bribery. So we've, we've had people <laughs> give our judges shots, money, candy, other personal favors, everything in between. So it's really, a, it's a family, it's a fun family event. It's open to the public. Anybody can attend. So I would say if you're going to do any one thing during Monterey Car Week, that is a good one to go to. Awesome. Okay. Well, what is after that? Because I know that's not the high point. <laughs> that is not the high point. So the same day, so you're going to have to, you know, you might have to bounce around between the two. The same day, we also have Legends of the Autobahn. The Legends of the Autobahn is great because um, what you really get to see is, um, all of your favorite German makes, and uh, you get to work with car clubs like the BMW Car Club of America, the Mercedes uh, Club of America, and the Audi Club of America, and you really get a full uh, kind of run of each of these different manufacturers and all of the cars, both from a older classic and as well as a newer classic perspective, and these are all people. All, all these people are just kind of nev- normal, everyday people who are bringing their beloved cars. Uh, to the show field and to showcase, you know, their their favorite BMW or their favorite Mercedes. So it's a fun one. There's always a bunch of food vendors out there, too. It's a huge show field, so you can walk around a lot. I mean, you could literally spend the whole day there. There are hundreds of cars. Okay. All right. Well, that's awesome. That's really cool. Okay, then what's after that? Okay. So after that, um, then we're getting into Concourse Sunday. And, uh, you know, I would say Lemons is probably my 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 favorite event of the week, but my second favorite is our uh, tried and true annual tradition, which is Haggerty Dawn Patrol. So have you joined us at Dawn Patrol before, Greg? I have not, and I need to do that this year. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, you need to set your alarm for 3 a.m. Okay. <laughs> and uh, meet us on the show field. So we typically, I have gotten to the show field at 3.35, and there are people in the dark waiting for us. Oh my goodness! Um, wow. So what? Yeah. So what Haggerty Dawn Patrol is 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 just held off the 18th green of the Pebble Beach Golf Links, and it is the kind of unofficial, but now fairly official because it's such an annual tradition. Start of the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance. So what's great about it is that Haggerty is there. We serve coffee and donuts to everybody in attendance, and then as the sun rises um, against that kind of coastline you actually start to see the cars from uh, that will be shown during the concourse uh, move on to the show field. So, you know, what's really, what's my favorite part about this is not only just a beautiful picturesque setting, but it's so rare to some to, to see these unique cars in motion, to be able to hear them, to smell them, 
you know, to, to feel the exhaust coming off of them. And you actually get to do that. And it's one after another as all of these cars enter the show field and, and get set up for the day. So that's my favorite part of Dawn Patrol. And um, if you are there early enough um, and if you're paying attention, you will also get a coveted Dawn Patrol hat. Which wow. every year we make. Is that, yes. like, is that like 3.15 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I would say you definitely want to be there by 3.45 a.m. Uh, to start lining up for that. Um, every year we make a different version of our hat. And it's, it's a little bit of a point of pride. You know, only the true enthusiasts get up and show up uh, to be able to get this hat. And we've seen these hats uh, go on eBay for up to $400. Wow, so that's it, incredible. It's a, it's a fun thing. Yeah, something to be earned. Yeah, it must be earned. That's right. Now, I haven't done the one at Monterey, but I have done my own informal Dawn Patrol at Amelia Island, and you're absolutely correct. That is when you want to be there because it's when the cars are moving. It's when nobody else is there for the most part. You get to hear them, smell them, watch them go by, mm -hmm. and it is just truly amazing. It is wonderful. So that is a great event. I will definitely be there at Dawn Patrol. I don't know if my wife will be there, but I will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And then, you know, we have the main event, which is the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance. Uh, so that kicks off at noon on Sunday. And uh, what is really exciting this year with Hafferty is that not only are we uh, a sponsor of, uh, a continuing sponsor of the Concord, but this year we are also their media partner. And what that means is that we are broadcasting the entire five hour or so uh, event live on our website. So if you go to pebble.haggerty.com, you will be able to uh, enjoy the Concorde from the comfort of your own home. And not only are you going to see all of the cars um, crossing the stage, all of the awards, all of the great um, you know, speeches, but you'll also get to see uh, things that only the in-home in viewers get to see, um, B-roll packages of uh you know, past show winners, interviews with, uh, interview with Sandra Button, the chairman of the Concours, and everything in between. So there's a lot of at-home footage that we are baking into the live stream that is available for the people on site. So it's a great experience, and we hope that whether you are there in person, that you will come by and say hello to us at Haggerty, um, or any of the Haggerty people wearing Haggerty in, uh, uniforms, or, uh, you know, make sure to just tune in from the comfort of your living room or your car or wherever you are. That's amazing, and that's a full week of cool stuff. So you've done a wonderful job of recapping when everything's occurring, and what I will do is I will put some links in the show notes, so if you weren't able to write all those down, just go to the show notes for this podcast, and you'll be able to click to learn more. Well, is there anything else you would like to mention about Monterey Car Week before I get to keep cash and crush? Yeah, I would say, you know, we are already gearing up for Monterey Car Week. So if you want to kind of just keep abreast of everything that's happening during Monterey Car Week, not only with what Haggerty is doing, but just the, the schedule of events in general, um, you know, there are three ways to do that. You can uh, visit us at haggerty.com slash media where we'll be covering everything from, you know, the Little Car Show to Concorso Italiano uh, to the races at Laguna Seca. Um, you can also text um, PEBBLE21, so that's P-E-B-B-L-E-21, to 227-588, and you will get um, SMS text message alerts throughout the entire week of things that uh, you won't want to miss, whether it's events or stories or big auction sales at RM. Uh, Sotheby's and everything in between. So that's another way to stay on top of it. And then the last thing is the website that I mentioned, pebble.haggerty.com, where it is 100% focused on the Pebble Beach Concourse specifically. Um, as a lead up to the main event, we are doing profiles of best in show winners in the past you know, little known facts about the Concord that you didn't necessarily know, uh, profiles of, sh of judges, how a car gets prepped for the Concord, um, everything in between. Wow, that's really amazing. And I'm going to jump on that text message here in a second because that's a great idea. You know, you, you kind of get alerted to anything you might be missing so you can join in. So that's really cool. Exactly. Wow. Well, I really appreciate your time today. And now this is, like I said before, your third time on the podcast, but you have yet to do Keep Cash and Crush. So I thought this would be a perfect yes. time. And as a reminder, it's my little game where I have fun and it's painful for you. Uh, but I'll give you three <laughs> cars. And these three okay. cars, you have to pick one to keep forever. You have to pick mm -hmm. one to cash in. And then unfortunately, you have to pick one to send to the crusher. 
Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so uh, are you ready? I am. Let's go. Okay, awesome. Well, as I mentioned, this is the Mega Monterey episode, and we're covering a lot of the cars at the RM Sotheby's auction, which is truly mind-boggling. Uh, so I did pick three. Now, I did not pick the Porsche 917 that's going to go between you know, sixteen point five and eighteen million dollars. I did not pick the Ferrari that's going between six and eight, but I did pick three cars that are going between three and four and a half million dollars. So it's not going to be an easy task, okay? Well, you know, you know, I have high end taste, so that's that works for me. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? You might have just answered my question on which car you're going to keep. So let's see. Your first car is a nineteen thirty five Duesenberg Model J Dual Cal Phaeton. So that's your oh, first okay. car. And I'm actually okay. picking cars from 30 years apart. Each one's 30 years okay. apart. The next one is a 1963 Shelby 289 Cobra Works car, so one of the factory works car. And mm. the third one is a 1995 Ferrari F50. So you have to pick one to keep forever, one to cash in, and unfortunately one to crush. So again, that's a 1935 Duesenberg Model J Dual Cal Phaeton. A 1963 mm-hmm. Shelby 289 Cobra works car, and then a 1995 Ferrari F50. So how are you going to pick? Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep the Duesenberg. I feel like <laughs> that is uh, that is the smart, safe play. A Duesenberg never goes out of style, and uh, it would just be too much of a shame to crush it. Okay. All right. I As soon as you said fashion i said she's going to pick the duesenberg okay <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> all right now which one are you going to cash in and which one are you going to crush Ooh. okay um so i've got the ferrari and then i've got the cobra um i am going to cash in the cobra okay yeah yes yes i'm going to cash in the cobra um from everything that I've learned at my time at Hackerty, I think that that uh, is a good bet, and uh, it's a good time now. So that means you're crushing the F50. Is that correct? That is true. I'm crushing the <laughs> F50. Well, you do. Now, we can see why you're crushing us at Collector Car Fantasy Football, because the car you decided to cash in was the most valuable car. So great call on that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you so much, Julie. Again, what are a couple ways that our listeners can learn more about Haggerty Media? There are so many ways to engage with Haggerty Media. So if you are not part of Haggerty Drivers Club yet, you should absolutely join. Not only do you get our award-winning Haggerty Drivers Club magazine six times a year, you also get a slew of automotive discounts. You get access to exclusive content, events, and uh, you also get roadside assistance which is white glove service. So, you know, if it happens, which it does, uh, it's part of the pain and the joy of, of, of owning classic, you know, when you do have a roadside uh, assist need, you can just call or text us and we will be there and it's white glove service. So we know exactly how to handle manual transmission. Uh, we come with a flatbed truck. We come with soft straps, all of those great things. So I would say that that is uh, one way to get our magazine. Otherwise, you can visit us at Haggerty.com slash media. We publish anywhere from 15 to 20 articles a day from everything from, you know, here are uh, starter classics that you can buy for under 10K to, uh, you know, can you believe they found this Ford Crestliner in a cave? and everything in between. <laughs> right. uh, and then we also have our social media channels. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Um, we are not on TikTok yet, although we are looking at it. So if you're on TikTok and you want to see us there, let me know. <laughs> okay. Officially, I'm not on TikTok either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome, Julie. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Well, thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate it. This is so fun. Okay, you just heard from Gord and from Julie, so now it's time to hear what cars are catching the eye of one of our car specialists in California, so Alexander Weaver. How are you doing today? Hey, Greg. Doing well. How are you? Good, good. I really appreciate you being on the podcast, and this is the Mega Monterey Car Week episode. So 
Uh, if anyone should be on this podcast, it should be you, because obviously we have some car specialists out there in California, and uh, I know that you're one of the quote-unquote managers, right, for this particular auction? Yeah, yeah. I think everybody has worked their tails off and put together a great lineup for sure. So we're excited about everything we have coming up next week, and uh, I think we're going to have a, a, a crazy auction. I think it's going to be a great week overall. Yeah, and now as a manager for an auction, just could you give us a little insight? Are you like the gatekeeper of the quality of cars that are showing up at Monterey? I don't know if I want to take that responsibility on. <laughs> um, but, yes, uh, so there's a, a couple of us, myself and Gord specifically, uh, that kind of, you know, a lot of the consignments come to us and, from all the specialists around the world. And they say, hey, what do you think of this? And, and, and Gord and I have to kind of keep track of what we're being offered all around. So, you know, you might get offered four E-types, but we want to take the best two at the most attractive pricing and things like that. So you have to consider a lot of different angles on uh, on each deal and and kind of be aware of what every specialist has going on so it, it's a bit of a uh, a juggling act but uh, we've gotten to the point where we're we work well together and um we hope and we think we've put together a good uh lineup for this year's monterey auction yeah it's really a spectacular lineup and i've covered a few of the cars and i know by the time this airs gord will have already covered the 917 in particular so we don't need to talk about that outstanding legendary porsche but I did want you to kind of touch base on some of the cars that have caught your eye that folks need to be aware of. Yeah, so let me think uh, some of the more interesting cars. I think one section of cars that will be very interesting is the late model Ferrari manual collection that we can sign. Uh, those are all coming from one gentleman. And it, it'll be very interesting. I think we all know that the late model manual cars have had another resurgence, as they do every couple of years. Um, but seeing a 430 Spider with a manual low miles, a 599 G GTB with low miles uh, in a manual, a 612 Scaglietti with a manual low miles, you know, those cars to me, uh, that's an exceptional group um, that w nobody's seen a whole grouping like that together. You know, in our Mia Island auction, we had a fantastic 599 manual uh, that did really, really well, um, but that was the only one like that. Um, in this lineup, having the, the, the 575 Super America with a manual, the 430, the 599, the 612, all of that, and the 550 Barcata as well. I think that'll be a really, really interesting group of cars. You know, and that really is talking to the next generation of car enthusiasts. Obviously, they're active now and they're buying now, and they're picking up kind of the last of the best. I had an episode called, you know, Analog Supercars. And that's what people are wanting. They want kind of the last of the generation, and part of that is the manuals, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, that, that'll that be a fun group to see it going through. Um, find some of the others. We we have a whole group, another collection as well, of, you know, late model supercars and exotic cars um, from, you know, a Ferrari 512M and 512BBI all the way up to an Enzo, a La Ferrari, a 918, and a Veyron. Um, <laughs> you know, and that group is, is a really well curated group of cars. Um, all of them have some sort of special features or good color combinations or, or things like that. So, you know, we're excited about that. Uh, we're excited to even, you know, there's a couple great Duesenbergs in the auction. Always excited to have a great Duesenberg in the auction. You know, you were talking to Gord about the 917. Um, I think to follow up on the 917, that was kind of the first big car we had consigned to the auction. Right. And once we had that car consigned, we kind of thought about it, and I said, you know, with a 917, having that is a consigned thing in this sale, I think we can go out and get some other great racing Porsches. Right. So we kind of, you know, put our heads down and thought about what could we go out there and get. And the one that I was most excited to, to track down was a an original 1968 911R. Um, and so we have this 911R in the sale, and it's one of the very few, believed to be about four, that actually have their original motors in them. Wow, and there's only 20 of those built, right? Exactly, yes, and, you know, largely original body panels and everything. So, you know, to me, that is probably the most uh, special 911 that you can buy. Um, right. You know, it's really, truly the, the, the originator of the racing pedigree for the 911s and such a great example of them as well. So, you know, for any real serious, serious Porsche collector, I think that is a, an unrepeatable opportunity to acquire one. Yeah, you're not kidding about that. And it just a little sneak behind the curtain here. What does that look like? Do you just kind of go through your Rolodex of clients and 
say, hey, I know where one is. If you ever thought about selling it in the, in the next 10 years, now's the time. Is that kind of how it works? That's exactly how it worked, yes. <laughs> you know, and, and just the gentleman was like, okay, what is it worth today? What do we think we can do for it? You know, give me, a, give me an idea of what we're looking at here. So, uh, yeah, and it worked out very well. Um, and we're really, really excited for that opportunity. And, you know, after that, it was also, okay, what other great uh, Porsches could we have? So we got a great 956, a great 962, and a great 550 Spider. And I think for the 550, the 911R, and the 956, the 962, and the 917, I think all of that really shows amazing Porsche history with their race cars. And, uh, you know, there's actually a 914 6 GT in there as well. And that also, you know, it, it's funny how, you know, it just was kind of a snowball effect once you get, you know, the big start there with that 917. We were able to really latch on a lot of other great Porsches, so... Uh, you should be excited to see kind of what all we have coming through that way. Yeah, it's very interesting because I've often been a proponent at like Concord Elegances, you know, have a lineage class, you know, and you really do have that here with the 917. You know, there's an RSR in there. There's a 935, you know, and all the cars you just mentioned, you could literally have your own lineage racing Porsche Concord class, and it will actually be at our auction and everything's available for sale. So, Really spectacular grouping of cars. Uh, as I look through, I mean, it's just one outstanding car after the other. The one that caught my eye the other day was they posted a 1961 Aston Martin DB4 GT. So still a stellar car in and of itself, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and that's a car that we've known for many years. And, you know, we were very thrilled to get that. You know, I, I did a fun thing the other day. I was talking to a client and I said, you know, I just looked on our website and there were five cars I'm sorry, 12 cars, and they equaled $60 million worth of value, low estimate. So, you know, when you wrap your brain around that, you know, a low estimate average of $5 million, and I'm sure that average is even higher now since we've had some other really cool stuff consigned. We also have another D, or a DB4 GT lightweight uh, 1959 Aston Martin. So it seems like we're really hitting on the production race cars uh, for a large part of this. Is that right? Yes, and, you know, it. They're all, with the exception of maybe the 917 and the 935, you know, um, and the 962, 956, a lot of them are streetable race cars, too. You know, things that you could still drive to cars and coffee, you still could take on a, on you know, a, a vintage of a rally event or something like that. So, um, but even, you know, the 917, the 956, those are cars that can be fairly easily run in, you know, some vintage races and stuff as well, or, or just track days. Sure, sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I know you're an AC Cobra guy. I'm a Shelby Mustang AC Cobra guy. And there's unique offerings there as well, because not only do you have a 66 GT350 Hertz car, uh, I believe it's one of the stick shift cars, you also have a 65 GT350, which, you know, we'll, we'll see those pass through the auctions here and there, an AC Cobra 289 car. And what's neat about this auction, we we actually have a car that most folks don't know about, and that's the AC uh, 427 convertible, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. The uh, from the from the collection that we got early on there, uh, the 428 Spider. That's a very rare example, um, and also one that we're very happy to have landed here as part of an AC collection. Yeah, kind of bouncing back to some of the other items that you had missed. There were the, the in the 65 GT350. We also have a 66 carryover car. Oh, and the yeah. 66 hertz car that you mentioned, and yes, that is a four-speed and one of the, you know, 80 or so documented four-speed cars. So, um, you know, having that that lineage of GT350s is kind of a, a cool part as well. So, you know, looking back at it, we did get a lot of stuff that, that kind of flows together in, in batches here, you know, from this AC collection to some other Shelbys, you know, a, a regular, you know, Shelby 289 Cobra and a 289 Comp Cobra into the GT3, Shelby GT350s. You know, that's kind of a, a really cool evolution of all of that. Yeah, you're right. And I didn't think about it that way. And correct me if I'm wrong here. So you got the 65 GT350, the earliest one, the first one, the really raw one. You have the carryover 66, which, if my understanding is correctly, is basically a 65 with a lot of the 65 parts and the way it's set up, the exhaust and different things that rolled into 66. So when you look at a 66, that's probably the most valuable 66 car. Is that correct, the carryover ones? Yes, the carryovers, exactly. And then right behind that would be the four-speed Hertz car. I mean, I'm kind of not counting the four <laughs> convertible GT350s, but then it would be yeah. the Hertz car, correct, with the four-speed? Exactly, yes. 
Yeah. So it seems like we're just, we got a lot of cool lineage things happening here. And, and you mentioned the AC collection. The ACs go way back. And we even have a 1938 AC 1690 Roadster and a couple others. So it's not often you see an AC collection. Everybody knows about the Cobras, but there's a lot of other ACs out there that they'll be able to check out at the auction, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it, there's something for everyone, and that's what we like to, to do in Monterey, for sure. Yeah. Now, is a particular, I don't know, lower price point car that you're kind of wondering, you know, well, how will that do at Monterey? I know sometimes we'll have a little Fiat Jolly that surprises everybody. Is there anything that we have currently consigned that you kind of want to see what happens in the marketplace, considering it's a lower price offering? You know, right now, I would say one of my favorite cars, uh, and, and I'm a little biased because I did get to, you know, spend some time in this car on the Copper State, was a 73 BMW 3.0 CSI, but that has a, a little bit of a heart transplant in it with a, a later model BMW M5 engine in it. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, that to me, you know, is it, it's not low price point, but it's on the lower end of, of kind of our spectrum, and that is a riot of a car to drive and it is you know in great condition stunning and, and you know ready to go on a thousand mile rally so uh or or something you could even daily drive so i like that um you know i might get a little bit of pushback here but i also really like the uh the ferrari 400 eyes that we have mm. um they're both we have two of them which just is a coincidence and um they're both manuals and they're both in great great shape a, a black black one and a silver tan one so I'm a big fan of those. Um, you know, another thing that's kind of grown on me a lot lately is a 968 Cabriolet, uh, and we have a really good example of that. So, you know, as far as the fun stuff goes, a Corvair wagon, which is funny, um, <laughs> and a Messerschmitt, you know, so those are kind of your, your more funky stuff. Uh, but uh, we surely have, you know, a little bit of everything and something for everyone. Sure, sure, yep. And one thing that caught my eye, because I didn't realize they made a Spider version, is a 1967 ASA 1000 GT Spider. I've, I've seen the ASA Coupe, which is pretty cool, and that is a relative of Ferrari, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and that is, a, that is a good-looking car, especially for that price point. Right, yes, the estimate's 160 to 180. Uh, and like you said, there's a lot of cool stuff. Obviously, we have a really nice uh, Volkswagen bus, which is always cool to see, especially when you're out in California. And uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. We got the nice FJ45 that's been upgraded with some nice specs. So a lot of good stuff. Uh, we even go way back. We have an 1886 Benz uh, motor wagon, one of the prototypes of the original Mercedes or the original Benz from way back in the day. So now is there anything else you'd like to call out as far as the cars on offer at Monterey? No, I think we, shoot, I think we covered most of the good stuff. I mean, everything in there is good, but, you know, some of the more special things that, that I was more really excited to see. So, you know, I think uh, I think you kind of nailed it there. Oh, cool. Okay. I do know there's a couple, uh, speaking of lower price point, but there's a couple little motorbikes uh, and motorcycles, but they have a Steve McQueen connection to go along with the Steve McQueen connection, like with the 917. So it's kind of neat to see where that 917, what it brought in. Not only did it bring in the 911R, like you said, but it's also brought in some other more attainable stuff, such as a 1970 Triumph Bonneville, uh, once uh, owned by Steve McQueen. So some really neat things that are coming into the auction. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about it? You know, log on to our website, rmsotheby's.com is always the best way. And uh, you can always reach out to one of the specialists as well if you have any questions about any individual cars. On each lot on the website, there is a button to contact a specialist, and, you know, they'll shoot them an email, and uh, we'll happily get right back to you. Um, and if you have any questions on registering to bid or anything like that, that can also be uh, all done on our website or by calling any of our offices. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate your time today. All right. Thanks, Craig. I really appreciate it. Yep, and I'll see you in Monterey. Thanks for listening to the Collector Car Podcast. Don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes and be sure to follow us on Instagram and everywhere else at the Collector Car Podcast.